For ages, thinkers and philosophers have pondered the question, what makes us human? Plato came close to answering the question when he claimed we're just featherless bipeds. That is, until Diogenes presented Plato with a plucked chicken. This anecdote goes to show that some things in life remain unanswered, no matter how hard we humans try to explain them. Perhaps that's part of what makes us human, a want to explain and make sense of everything in life. The sciences have done wonders to shed light on things we previously explained away with magic or divine origins. Archaeology is no different. We humans want to know where we came from. How did our ancestors live? What does that mean for us? But more often than not, these ventures into ancient history saddle us with a dozen more questions for every answer that they seem to reveal. But being human, we're hardly deterred by these mysteries. In fact, the mystery is what makes these questions quite so titillating. Archaeologists have made many such discoveries. Hoping to understand our past, we have instead found things that we simply can't explain. If you came here looking for answers, then you're in the wrong place, but you probably didn't because you read the title of this video. If it just auto-played in YouTube, well, you can read it now and you'll find out you're in the wrong place. But if you want some head-scratching mysteries to ponder while you're bored at work, then you're on the right video. In the jungles and on the beaches of Costa Rica lie stones. Nothing special about that. But what if I told you that these stones date back as early as 300 CE and are perfectly round? They are also located dozens of miles away from their source, and they're made from chunks of rock weighing more than a dozen tons. That is pretty much all we know about these spheres. Questions abound like who made them, why did they make them, how did they make them, and how did they transport these massive stones across 30 miles of jungle? If we knew the answers to these questions, then we wouldn't be talking about them today, obviously, but experts have taken cracks at guessing. Some theories claim that these stones are handcrafted, while others claim that they were naturally formed in the bed of the Taraba River. There's much doubt surrounding the naturally occurring theory, since nature tends to not build perfect spheres. Plus, the Taraba River is 50 miles away from many of the sites where the stones now sit. This means that ancient humans were involved in transporting them, so there's a good chance they at least altered their shape as well. And that poses another eyebrow-furrowing mystery. How did a pre-machine civilization lug 15-ton stones through the untamed jungles of Costa Rica? You see, doing so would have meant hacking a path through thick growth for a long time while somehow moving the weight of three T-Rexes or 50 grizzly bears. Theories on these stones purpose range from ceremonial use to religious significance to donating tribal rank to marking burial spots. As often happens when confronted with mystery, though, humans have made stories and legends to try and explain it. According to some ancient civilizations, created a potion to soften stone, which enabled them to sculpt these perfect spheres. Others claim gods shot the stones down from the heavens to drive away enemies. And still others claim that these stones originate from Atlantis. None of these are very believable. Grand myths aside, science has had little more success in deciphering these stones' mystery. Since the stones were moved from their origin point, scientists have found it hard to date them accurately. The most accurate time frame they've given is between 300 and 1500 CE. The arrangement of the stones perplex experts, some clusters being arranged in a line, some in a curve, some just seem to be in a random cluster, and others just sit alone. Certain clusters are even arranged in geometric shapes that point towards Earth's magnetic north. For all the questions circling around these spheres, we're unlikely to find definitive answers. Whichever culture was responsible for the stone sphere's creation was wiped out by the onset of Spanish colonizers, and they left behind no written record. The next archaeological find sticks with the theme of gigantic South American rocks. It's a good theme. So let's go to the Peruvian city of Casco, or more accurately, north of Casco, to the ancient walled complex of Sacsayhuaman. This Incan construction has been the object of scholarly examination and debate solely because of its walls. You might think that the walls are nothing special. I mean, people were building walls centuries before the Incas constructed Sacsayhuaman in the 1400s. The aspect that fascinates archaeologists, though, is the mortalist method the Incas used and how, despite nothing to bind them, the stones in the wall mesh together perfectly. These 25 to 200 ton stones were made to fit together so 
well that not a gap can be seen between them. In fact, the rocks fit together so well that neither a sharp knife nor even a piece of paper can fit in between. So how did the Incas move such massive rocks? How did they shape them to fit together so well? How were they able to lift 200 tons into place without the modern day convenience of cranes? Experts have wondered and scratched their heads trying to answer these questions. Theories abound, some educated guesses, others a bit more far-fetched. And of course, with any unexplained phenomena, the explanation of aliens has been thrown out there incorrectly. Some of the more research theories include a plant's liquid being used to soften and shape the rocks, or heat treating them using large sun mirrors. I mean, not as unlikely as aliens, just just still really unlikely. A more current theory put forward by retired architect and construction manager John McCauley claims that the perfect fit of the walls and the gargantuan effort needed to build these walls was achieved through trial and error. Generations of Incas had hundreds of years to learn from their ancestors and perfect their method before finally erecting the finished project. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day, which sounds only slightly better than Sacsay Huaman wasn't built in a day. These walls have stood the test of time, surviving more than half a millennium of earthquakes, weather, collapse, colonial invasion, and now tourism. The next architectural wonder keeps us in Peru, but takes us up into the sky. Though the Nazca lines are drawn into the sand and dirt of the Peruvian desert, they can only be fully appreciated from high above. These lines depict a myriad of different animals, plants, shapes, and people. Their depictions are as big as 440 to 1,200 yards, and that's 400 to 1,100 meters, covering a total area of around 19 square miles or 50 square kilometers, but only going 4 to 6 inches deep in the ground, 10 to 15 centimeters. The designs depicted range from geometric figures to 70 different kinds of animals and plants, including a monkey, hummingbird, spider, whale, dog, cactus, flower, and tree. Other geoglyphs are just plain old lines, swirls, and zigzags. Most titillating to experts and conspiracy theorists alike, though, are the depictions of humanoid figures, most notably one nicknamed the astronauts. More recent archaeological expeditions have discovered depictions of what seems to be a decapitation scene, and another a picture of a many-legged mythical creature sticking out its tongue. Whirlwinds of questions surround these discoveries. Why did they draw this? How did they draw this? How were they able to achieve such great geometry on such a large geoglyph with no aerial help? And of course, you can insert the obligatory, it was aliens explanation here. Experts know the Nazca culture, which thrived in the area from about 100 BCE to 100 CE, created the lines, perhaps with the help of the Shaban and Paracas cultures that came before them. What they don't agree on, though, is how they made them and why. It's fairly obvious that ancient peoples removed the top layer of the sand and soil to expose the different colored dirt beneath, making the lines and shapes visible. However, what experts can't agree on is how they were able to form those lines into giant shapes. Some theories claim the ancient peoples used models ever increasing in size and proportion until they were able to carve out the massive geoglyphs that we see today. It's either that or aliens. Another debate is why they were carved. What purpose did they serve? Some guesses say that they were related to astronomy and served a calendrical purpose. Purpose. Others guess they were part of a ritual, a path that devotees would follow. Still others claim they were a message to the gods, shapes affiliated with water carved into the ground in one of the driest places on Earth. Whatever the actual reasons are, they elude even the most knowledgeable of experts. Suffice it to say, despite the extensive number of geoglyphs found, we still don't have the full picture of the Nazca lines. <laughs> Since so many unexplained archaeological mysteries seem to be accompanied by the faint whisper of it was aliens, let's give in for a minute and dive into one of the more bizarre and unexplained archaeological tales. As the story goes, an archaeological expedition in southwest China along the border with Tibet uncovered artificial caves housing over 700 discs. Allegedly, the discs were buried alongside the skeletons of short, frail creatures with large skulls. These discs had small holes in the middle and spiral grooves carved around them, almost like a record. These discs were sent to many experts and universities until they finally found a Chinese
Chinese archaeologist. He claims that the spiral grooves were actually a hieroglyphic text that told a 12,000-year-old story of the dropper aliens who crash-landed on Earth and were hunted down by the local people. The story continues on to say that the disks were then shipped to Russia for further study, where it was found that they were made of electricity-conducting metals. After that, the disks disappeared forever until 1974, when Ernest Wegerer, an Austrian engineer, claims to have seen them at Bampo Museum in Xi'an, China. The mystery unravels, though, when the facts are considered, or should I say, the lack of facts. In fact, there is no record of an archaeological expedition in that area during the supposed time of the discovery. The Chinese archaeologist who translated the disks has never been confirmed to have even existed. The pictures Ernst Weger allegedly took of the disks have never been seen, and even the disks themselves have eluded verification. Though they make for a fascinating archaeological tale, the dropper stones are most likely just that, and there's no fact here whatsoever. <laughs> So let's return to the realm of reality rather than just straight up fiction. And it's here we find the Long Yu Grottoes. This cave complex, comprising 24 independent caves, sits in the sandstone earth of Fenghuang Hill in the eastern Chinese province of Zhejiang. These caves measure between 60 and 110 feet, that's 18 to 34 meters, and reach as tall as 65 feet, that's 20 meters. For a long time, the Long Yu Grottoes were thought to be an odd but natural phenomenon. All the other human made caves, quarries, and mines from similar time periods differed vastly from these ones. The construction of these caves impressed experts. A single vertical entrance with carved stairs leads in and out of the cave. These shafts also allow rainwater to flow into the caves, where a system of drainage troughs, channels, and water traps direct and store the water. A steel chisel was discovered in one of the larger grottos. This led experts to theorize that the caves were formed from chiseling out the hollow interior layer by layer. Further research has led to theories that attempt to answer the question of when they were built Clay pots discovered in some caves date back to the Western Han Dynasty, which range from 206 CE to 24 CE, making the caves around 2,000 years old. The lack of further evidence makes it hard to say what purpose these caves served. That hasn't stopped a slew of theories being proposed. It's possible that the Long Yu Grottoes were ancient quarries, or perhaps hidden military encampments, or maybe storage reservoirs, or Taoist dwellings, or perhaps even a subterranean palace or ceremonial site. Whatever the truth may be, it remains buried deeper than the grottos themselves. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you haven't yet, this channel has a sister channel called Mega Projects. I'll link to that below. And thank you for watching.